Good morning, New Hope Church. Welcome to another wonderful Sunday, but not just any Sunday. It is Easter Sunday, so we're excited. We're pumped. I am Pastor Josue. This is my wonderful wife, Lauren, and we are the campus pastors of New Hope Milan. Happy Easter. Thank you for tuning in. We are so glad that you are joining us. And the church may be empty, but guess what is also empty? The tomb, because Jesus is risen. He is alive and his presence is with you wherever you're gathered today. So let's get excited for a great worship service and let's join Pastor Michelle and the worship team. See him now, the King of heaven, Son of God, enthroned above, heavy cross. On his shoulders, carried for us, carried for us. See him now, a king surrendered. Final word, a perfect love. Hear his cry, Father, forgive Spoken for us, spoken for us. Just be good.
there's no other name there's no other name like yours Jesus like yours Jesus there is there's no other name there's no other name like yours Jesus like yours Jesus no other name the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the dark kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven the King of kings has called me Savior, I'm 
Good morning, good morning, everyone, and happy morning. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy wow. Resurrection Amen. Day. Amen. It is so hard to believe that we are doing this on Easter. I know. We're used to everybody in their beautiful pajamas. No. No. Dresses. Everybody's in their beautiful dresses, and uh, we pray that today that you really make this a very, very special Easter for your family, that even though we're still under lock and key, yeah. you know, you can get outside and just stay apart from one another, and uh, make sure you hide some eggs and just have a wonderful time, yes. and you know, just enjoy your family, amen? Because right. we are the resurrected of God, amen? The, the thing about it is, what we are celebrating has not changed. That's so good. we don't get to come together. I'll get all emotional because I miss y'all. Um, we don't get to come together to celebrate Jesus and what he has done. But we're still celebrating Jesus and what he has done. He rose from the grave. He's changed our lives forever. It just kept hitting me during worship today. So powerful. Jesus has made a difference in you. He's made a difference in me. Yes. And that's what we're celebrating today. And it doesn't that's matter right. that we can't be together. We're still going to do our very best to celebrate Jesus and what he did for us. Yeah. 
And so I guess another really great way to look at it is that we are connected all over the Quad Cities. That's We've right. got little churches meeting all over the place. Right. And uh, we're celebrating the resurrection, even yeah. though we're not one big happy group. Yes. We're a lot of small happy groups. That's right. We're spreading the glory out. That's right. So we just want to wish you and your family, yeah. from our family, That's we right. want to wish you, uh, we're not all about the Easter thing so much, but we are really, I mean, we are, we celebrate it, yeah. but this is Resurrection Sunday. That's right. Gee, we celebrate Jesus. I tell you, he's yeah. risen from the dead. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Amen. But from our family to yours and yes. from our New Hope family, yes. uh, we just want to say happy Resurrection Sunday to you and Amen. to your family. Amen. Amen. So Amen. let's pray together, right. shall we? Is there another song coming up? After you're done preaching. After I'm preaching. Okay. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come together uh, as a family, even though we're in different places and different locations. Today, Lord, we celebrate life. Yes. Today, we celebrate the resurrection. We thank you for the Passover. And today, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. It is our decree. It is our declaration. It is our strong conviction that Jesus is raised from the dead. And so we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for yes. us. And we just pray that your grace would just envelop every person that's watching today. Lord, either by internet, by YouTube, on, on, on television, Lord, wherever we are, that we would be united in heart, we would be united yes. in spirit, because we all celebrate the fact that mm. Christ has risen from the Amen. dead. And we thank you for yes. it in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Happy resurrection. All right. Happy Remember resurrection. Remember that thing, he is risen? Yeah, he is risen indeed. There you go. <laughs> I good. almost missed it. Preach it. Thank you guys Come for on. great worship. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And we want to spend some time together uh, in the Word. And in fact, what I, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the purpose and the power of of the resurrection. I want to read to you from Luke chapter 24. So if you would uh, turn in your Bibles there, I know you uh, have your Bibles there at home somewhere. If you would grab that, or if you find it on your phone or uh, wherever you, however you access the word of God this morning, let's do that. So Luke chapter 24, and I want to read verses one through 12 uh, to you for our resurrection text this morning. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, and so they went in. But they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified, and, and they bowed with their faces to the ground. And then the men ask, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Are, are, that is a preacher's dream text. Why are you looking for the dead, among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember when he told you back in Galilee that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day? Listen, that's what we're celebrating today. He has risen from the dead. And so they remembered what he said when he said this. They rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the, the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. Does that sound like men to you? However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in, and he saw the empty linen wrappings. And then he went home again, wondering what had happened. This morning... I want you to know that there is a purpose for which Christ rose from the dead. And not only is there a purpose, but there also is a power that is made available to us through his resurrection. And I think this morning it becomes very important for us to know both the purpose and the power for us to fully enjoy the relationship that we have with God and to walk in the benefits that belong to us because of our covenant that we have with him. You see, we have a covenant because of the accomplishments of Christ on the cross. And that covenant comes with certain benefits. And so it's important. The Bible says, it says, forget not 
all of his benefits. A lot of people enjoy salvation. But I tell you this morning, there's a a lot more to your Christianity than just salvation. Not that I'm minimizing salvation. Thank God. I mean, we are the redeemed of God. You see, we'll spend eternity with Christ. But there's so many things that are available to us as we begin to understand the power of the resurrection and the purpose of the resurrection. You see, Paul said this, the Apostle Paul. He said, "I, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. And so the passion for believers today is this, is to know the living, to know the resurrected Christ, and to know the power that is associated with that resurrection. I've told my wife several times throughout this whole corona crisis that uh, America and the world is facing right now, I, I really don't know how people who don't know Christ are, are, are walking through this. I don't have that kind of external power of my own ability. And if it wasn't for my relationship with Jesus Christ, I would be filled with fear and anxiety. But one of the benefits of knowing him, one of the benefits of the resurrection is that, that he says that I've come that you might have peace. And so then the peace of God is one of our benefits. You see, the truth this morning is that if Jesus Christ had not raised from the dead, then he would have no power today. He he, he would just be dead. Like so many other prophets and, and so many other religious leaders and people who have started denominations and religious movements around the world over the centuries and over throughout history. If Jesus had not resurrected from the dead, he would just be another dead prophet and his words might have some influence, but he himself would have no power and neither would the church. But the good news is that this is not just a a religious book. This is not just a a book of great sayings from from some uh, religious holy man of God. This is the word of God. This is the word of life. This is the resurrected word of life. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and we have that Word now. And by virtue of that Word, we understand not only the the purposes of the resurrection, but we are able to, to tap into and we are able to walk in the power of that resurrection. So that's why the resurrection to us as believers is so important. Because Christianity is not based on these abstract principles. I want you to hear me clearly. Religion is man's attempt to reach God. But Christianity is a relationship that by virtue of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you and I can have with a living, a true, a just, a holy, a pure God. Who has all power. He's omnipotent. He has all power. He's omniscient. He knows knows everything. The, The Bible says that he's omnipresent. And yet he knows right where you are. He knows everything about your life. He knows every thought that you think. I tell people that what I love about my father is that he's the one who knows me the very best. And and even though he's the one who knows me the very best, he's the one that still loves me the very most. And I love that about God. I love that uh, even God knows the the very deepest inner parts of who I am. He doesn't turn away and, and, and view me as some grotesque sinner just trying to get by in this life. He sees me as his son. He sees me as his child. He sees me as the redeemed of God. He sees me as holy and he sees me as righteous. We teach our church here at New Hope. That we're not, listen to me very carefully, I'm talking about the resurrection. I want you to get this. We are not sinners saved by grace. You You can't be the redeemed and be a sinner at the same time. We've been redeemed from sin. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I think it's a slap in the face of God for him to do all that he did for us. For him to to pay the price for, for our redemption. And then we refer to ourselves after everything that he did. And we refer to ourselves as a a sinner saved by grace. So then what change has happened? I tell you, Christianity is a relationship with the living Savior. 
It's a relationship with the, a Savior that we can know. It's a relationship with the Savior who infuses our lives and who, who empowers us. A Savior who, who transforms us into his likeness. So what is it that Paul means when he says that I want to, I want to know Christ? Jeremiah chapter 9, 23 and 24 say this. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him boast, let, let he who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and he knows me, that I am the Lord. I want you to hear God describe himself and, and who he is in your life. He describes himself and he says that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love. I don't know where, where you are today. I don't know as you're walking through this time of, of life and this period of, 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 our, of our history. I don't know where you are, but I want you to know something. God loves you with an everlasting love. He's always loved you, and he always will love you. And I said this probably every Sunday that we've been in, involved in this, that God doesn't want to judge your sin. God wants to forgive you. The, on the basis upon, of God's forgiveness is that you make a decision and you judge your own sin. And, and by judging it, you confess that it is sin. And that you ask God to forgive you of your sin. He says that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love. Who practices justice. Who practices righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. This morning on Resurrection Sunday. I want you to know that knowing God is more important than wisdom. Knowing God is more important than, than strength or riches. As, as humans, and, and we all have kind of have that, that general sense of, a, of, of, of human nature that we gravitate towards people that we admire. And what, and what do we admire in people? We tend to admire people who are bright. We tend to admire people who are intelligent and knowledgeable. We tend, to, we tend to admire people who are physically gifted in their strength or their talent or their beauty or those that, that have great wealth. And yet the Lord would say, and he says in his word, that none of those things are of great importance. That we, we have our priorities wrong. In fact, what matters more than anything else is understanding and knowing the Lord. Knowing the covenant God who delights in kindness. Knowing the covenant God who delights in justice and, and in righteousness. I find it interesting this morning that right before he died, listen to this prayer that, that Jesus Christ himself prayed right before he died in John 17, 3. He says, now this is eternal life. That they, referring to you, referring to me, referring to, to people alive at that time and every person since then, he said, this is eternal life, that they would know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. First John chapter 5, verse 20 says, we, also, we, all, we know also that the Son of God has come and that he has given us understanding so that we may know who, him who is true. And, and we are in him who is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God, and he is eternal life. And so John tells us that Jesus came so that, that, that we, we might know the Father, that we might know him. Jesus came that we might have a relationship. There was a wide gulf between you and, and the Father. And the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ became the bridge through which we access the Father. Here in, our, in, in the community in which we live, and our church is called the Quad Cities, and, and, and everybody in the Quad Cities is very familiar with the bridges. There are a series of bridges that cross from one state to the other. And, and, and any little tie-up or any little incident on the bridge can cause traffic jam. We know all about, about crossing the bridge. We know all about crossing the, 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 the bridge to get over the Mississippi from one state to another. In fact, I, our church is in Illinois, and my wife and I live in Iowa. And so I cross that bridge several times, and many times a week we cross that bridge. 
And oftentimes my mind has, has gone and thought, I wonder what it was like crossing the Mississippi before they had bridges and before they had boats that would take them across and, and how difficult it was. And, and, and there would be people that would live on one side and would never even know anything about people on the other side because of a, a great barrier that existed until bridges were built. And so it is with our relationship with, with the Father, that there's a great gulf there and, and you can't know the, the love of the Father. You can't know the benefits of the covenant that we have with the Father. But the Bible says, Jesus said, he said that, that no man comes to the Father unless he comes by me. No one can find access or relationship with the Father unless he comes by me. So John says that Jesus came to point us to the Father. So we read that in the Old Testament. We read it in the New Testament. We hear it from Peter. We hear it from Paul. We hear it from John. And all agree that knowing God, knowing Jesus is central. But what exactly does that mean? What does it mean to, to know God? The very first step is putting your, your faith in him. And believing that he is the son of God and, and believing that the event that we celebrate today, re the resurrection really did take place and wanting him and inviting him to make you a new creation. Listen, I want to tell you with all the self-help programs that exist in the world today, you'll never make yourself better on your own. You'll never discipline yourself to a new person. Oh, you can look better. You can have surgeries done. You can lose weight. You might even discipline your world to where you get a lot of things accomplished. But at the very inner core of who you are, you'll never make yourself better on your own accord. Because the only way to have a true and lasting change is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that brings you to the Father. The second thing is, is how do you know God? Is spending time with him in prayer. Having I, I, a prayer life isn't this legalistic, you know, I got to work through my prayer list and my prayer request. A prayer life is sharing your joys and, and your frustrations. You can talk to him like he's your best friend. You can talk to him and, and, and share all of your sorrows with the, the it, and it blows my mind that the, the very God of the universe cares about the, 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 the slightest, the, the, the minutia of my life. That he's interested in me. He's interested in you. He, the Bible says that he loves you with an everlasting love. And then this third step is following him. Learning what pleases him and, and, and what to expect from him. And what he can expect from you. Being willing to follow him even when his word doesn't make sense. And depending, depending on, on him even when his, his requ request and his requirements seem unreasonable. That's called stepping out. That's called living a, a life of faith. And what we have learned of our father is that he's there for us. He's a, the Bible says he's an ever-present help in the time of need. And you'll begin to discover. This morning, I, that's what it means to know him. But I want to talk about the other thing that, that Paul said in that prayer was to, to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. You see, Paul prays in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 20. Paul prays for the Ephesians to know the incomparable. I love that. He prays that they would know the incomparable. It's, it's far beyond compare. The incomparable great power for us who believe, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And so here's the good news this morning, is that all Christians have that power. I have the resurrected power in my life. You have, the, if you've come to know Jesus Christ and made him the Lord of your life, you have the resurrected power. It's called the anointing. It's called Holy Spirit in your life. And our task is to, is to tap into it. So what is the power of the resurrection? How does it work in our life? I tell you, one of the greatest benefits of the resurrection power is that, is that we have the power to have our sins forgiven. To have our sins. The Bible says, for, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's that gulf that I was talking about. That's that Mississippi River. You can't get from Illinois to Iowa without a bridge. You can't get from your, your natural earthly existence to the Father without a bridge. And Jesus Christ is that bridge. And we have the power to have our sins forgiven. You see, that with, without God, the Bible says that without God, we are, we are slaves to sin. 
But with Christ, through his death and his resurrection, he has freed us from the power of sin. Let me, let me tell you for just a second about slavery. You see, slavery is a, is a blight on, on, on our culture. And, and, and even today, and we, we know of, of, of slavery in the past, and, and that has, 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 has spotted our history. It's ugly, it's grotesque. It's, it's, let me even say this this morning. Slavery is demonic. And we know of it even now in sex trafficking and people that are, are held in, in slavery. Slaves do not do what they want to do. They do what they're told. And so it is with, with, with people that are slaves to sin. People think, well, I'm going to do my own thing. And I hear people say that all the time. God's not going to tell me what to do. In fact, I, I, I saw a one thing. A man had his fist raised up to heaven. And he said, I'm going to live life on my terms. I'm going to live life my way. And God is not going to tell me what to do. I beg to differ. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And people who don't know, you see, real freedom is not found in you becoming your own man. You'll never, you'll never be your own man outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, until you come into that loving, living relationship with Christ, you are a slave to sin and you will do what you're told to do. And Satan will hold you in bondage. He'll take you down paths you never wanted to go. He'll take you into a life that you never were intended to live. He'll destroy your family. He'll destroy your health. He'll destroy your finances. He'll take from you and then once he's taken everything that you have to give, he'll take even more. And he'll break you. And he'll break your spirit. You see, but in God, we're free from that. Jesus Christ was delivered over to sin, over to death because of our sin. And he was raised to life so that we might become the free sons of God. And that's my plea today for you. That's my cry today for you. That's my hope and that's my prayer. Is that you will come into a, a living and a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And that you'll find the hope. The Bible calls it the, the hope of glory. And that you'll come into a place where you find the life and you find the freedom. And the expression of life that is yours and found only through Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says that when Jesus died, that God, God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Jesus is the only human being that ever walked on the earth and never once sinned. He's the only one that, that, that lived a completely sinless life. In fact, there were only two, two people that were, were born into this natural world uh, uh, free of sin. The first one was Adam. And Adam blew his opportunity. The second was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, because he never sinned, he became the, he became the spotless, the Bible calls him the spotless lamb of glory. And when he came to that cross... He was laid bare on that cross. And all of my iniquity and all of your iniquity, all of your sin was laid upon him who knew no sin. He who knew no sin became sin so that we who were born into sin might be the redeemed of God. His punishment on the cross was the punishment that you and I deserved and have been spared because he stood in that place for us. I tell you, this morning we celebrate life. This morning we celebrate the resurrection. That Jesus paid the price for you that you might live in resurrection power. His resurrection means that we now walk and that we now live in that forgiveness. And we are, listen to me, we are forever forgiven of our past. I had someone, a young man not long ago say, Pastor, I, I, I struggle with the fact that there, I, I have committed sin. And every now and then that sin comes up and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of my past. And I told him, and the Bible says that, that the Lord has separated you from your sin as far as the east is from the west. He's cast your sin into the deepest ocean. And the Bible says, watch this, he remembers them no more. 
Does that mean that God just somehow absentmindedly forgets? No, God has forgiven you. He has redeemed you and you are not guilty. Your sins have no hold over you. Your past has no hold over you. Well, not only are we forgiven of our sins, but the resurrection power means that we have the power to, to conquer sin. It empowers us. You see, we don't, we don't have to sin. Before you knew Jesus Christ, you had no choice but to sin because you, you, you were a slave to sin and you did what you, told, you were told. And you don't have to live in the power of sin any longer. In Christ, we put on, we become a new creation. We're like God in true righteousness and holiness, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. We're a new creation, and now his spirit lives inside of us. Let me, let me tell you how this works this morning. You see, what the enemy does, what Satan does, is that he tries to deceive us. He tries to make us think that we still belong to him. I, I, I've, I've illustrated it this way, and I think it's a great illustration. You've seen the cartoons where there's a little angelic being, you know, it's the good you over on this shoulder. And then there's the, there's the demonic you, the ugly you over on this shoulder. And, and you're being pulled to and fro. Or, or here's the enemy over here, and he's pulling you. And, and God is over here pulling you. And you're like that. Listen, if that's your concept of what this looks like, it's completely wrong. Because first of all, God is not on the level, your, your level, and he's certainly not on the level of the enemy. And it's not a tug of war between, between good and evil. Jesus Christ is the Lord over all. He reigns supreme. He sits on his throne. He reigns majest, in majesty and in righteousness. And you are under him. And then the Bible says that, that there will be a day when it's called, he's called the son of perdition, referring to the enemy. When, this, when, when Satan is revealed to the nations of the world, and the nations will look on in surprise, they'll look on in shock, and they'll say, that's the son of perdition? He's the one that has deceived us all these years. We thought, he was, we thought he was enormous. And, and listen, what he is, is he's, he's, a, he's a master deceiver. He's a master liar. And where's the Bible say that he is? It's not a tug of war between you and you, between God and, and, and evil. God reigns over you. But what does the Bible say about, about, about you? The Bible says that Satan is under your feet. And so it's not like this, it's like this. It's the Father, it's you, and he rules. Under your, he, he is under your feet. You rule over him. Church, you've got to get that. There's so many people that don't understand who they are in Christ. They don't understand the power that they have in Christ. And so they live their whole life struggling. They live their whole life wondering, how, how do I get to the next level? Listen, by virtue of the resurrected power, you have the power to break the habit that is upon your life. You no longer have to live in, uh, under the power of that habit. You see, that's why Paul has such a strong desire for that knowledge. The third thing that the resurrected power does over us is that it gives us the power to be God's people on the earth. I, I, I shudder to think what this earth would be like, what this world would be like without the church. It, it, it would grieve me to think. You see, Christianity is not just about forgiveness. Christianity is not just about, about uh, overcoming sin. Christianity is not simply a solution to our problems, but God has a positive purpose in our salvation, and he is determined that we would be the people of God and that we would be his family and that we would be his ambassadors on the earth today. And you and I have a job to do. You and I have a purpose to live. As the ambassadors of God, he empowers us to not only defeat sin. You see, we are, we, as, as we talk, talk a lot about the ecclesia. Ecclesia is a Greek word meaning, meaning the, the called out ones, meaning the ones that, that gather together. We are the governing arm of the body of Christ. The ecclesia gathers together and convenes as people of righteousness. And we are the ones that have the power to say, well, and Jesus said this to his ecclesia, whatever you bind on earth, I will be bound, it will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
And so we are the ones then that, that have the power to govern in authority, to govern in righteousness. We're the people of God. I want you to stop seeing yourself as just barely making it through this life. And I, and I, and I come, and, and, and now all of a sudden, you know, well, Lord, if I can just make it one more day, if I could just make it one more week, and then when I get to the end of my days and the sweet by and by, stop. We walk and we live in the resurrected power of a living Christ that is ours. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he has committed to us as his family. He has committed to us as his ambassadors. Watch this. The message of reconciliation. I love when Paul says, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. It's been said, and rightly so, that for some, uh, some people, you're the only Bible that they'll ever read. You're, 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 you're the only message of salvation they'll ever hear. Live your life well. Be an ambassador. Be a, be a voice. And so then, finally, he gives us the resurrection power to overcome the enemy in his, in his kingdom. It was through his death and through his resurrection that Jesus was given, I love this, he was given a name above every name. And that means that it's a power above every power, according to Philippians chapter 2, 5, 5 through 11. His name stands alone. His authority stands alone. His righteousness stands alone. The name above all names. There will be a day when every knee will bow. There will be a day when every tongue will confess. There will be a day when Jesus rules the nations of this earth in righteousness and holiness and in authority. You see, Jesus gave us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Can I, can I say that to you this morning, that he's given you power to tread, power to tread, power to walk in authority? To tread over all serpents and all scorpions. Can I, can I back up there just a second? Can I, can I call the body of Christ as many are today? I'm not, I'm not a lone prophetic voice. I'm not a lone apostolic voice. I'm joining my sword. I'm joining my shield. With the voices of the apostolic and the voices of the prophetic, not only here in our community, but, but in this region and, 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 and in our nation and around the world. That we, we, we are experiencing a, a plague. And, 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 and at that plague came a Passover. We are in Passover. And at that plague came a Passover. And, and, and then after that came a, a, a divine, uh, which was a supernatural reset, a release. And after that came a, a divine reset of the people of God. I believe the church has been prophetically pregnant for quite some time. And I think we kind of waddled into this situation like a pregnant woman would. We've waddled into this crisis. And it caught us some many off guard. Never expected to have an empty church for four to six weeks in a row. Surprised us, caught us off guard. But yet now, there's a birthing process that has taken place, and it's, and it's painful. But I want to tell you that out of this birthing process that we're experiencing right now comes new life. And the body of Christ is rising up. And, 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 and we, are, we, are, we have the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. Let me back up. Come on, back up with me. We have power over this virus in Jesus' name. And we rise up. And I heard somebody say today, a prophet said today that the Lord revealed to them that, that this would probably be longer than we wanted it to be, which is already true, but it will not be as long as it has been suggested. We call for a, a, a supernatural end to this plague that it would pass over 
in the name of Jesus. And we would rise up in the resurrection power of the anointing and be that church. Be that church. It's a, 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 a fine-tuned instrument in the hands of a, of a mighty God. So knowing that power that we, we exercise our rightful authority over all the powers of darkness and we will not be afraid of them. I want to take just a moment as I close this morning and I want to specifically address those of you that are battling fear. The Bible tells us to fear not. In fact, the promise of fear, uh, the promise of, of fear not isn't just him saying fear not. He says this, fear not. For I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. For those of you that are walking through, through fear and anxiety, I just declare over you the peace of the Lord. So because of the resurrection, we can have that relationship with Christ and access to the power of Jesus Christ from the, who's raised from the dead, power to be forgiven of our sin, power to overcome sin, power to be a family of God's ambassadors, power to overcome Satan and his kingdom. And this morning, I just want to encourage you that if you've never asked Jesus Christ to become the Lord of your life, there's no better time for you to do that than on Resurrection Sunday. I want to encourage you right now to confess your sin before him. And I want you to, to ask him to forgive you. Lord, I, I confess my sin and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And I ask you to come into my life to be the Lord of my life. I say yes to Christ. And I invite you to be my Lord and to be my Savior. If you prayed that prayer this morning, we believe that you, you're born again. And we, we want you to, there's a link that's, if you're watching on, on the internet, there's a link that says, I said yes. I want you to click that link and we'll send you some materials and we'll pray for you. We'll stand with you in this. Listen, you don't have to walk in fear. You can be a man, you can be a child, you can be a woman of God, a woman of faith, a man of faith. In Jesus' name. We're so glad that you joined us today at New Hope. And uh, we're thankful that uh, you've become a, a part of our online community. And when we do all come back together, we want you to come and check us out. Become a, a part of the, a, a life of, of growing in faith. We're a church that believes in, in the fullness of God. We're a spirit-filled church. We believe in all the gifts of the spirit. We're not just going to let you walk through things in life. We're gonna, we believe that God still heals today. We believe that he still fills people with the Holy Spirit. And that he, and he is a God of, of favor and love. And that he wants to become a part of your life. And we want to we wanna walk with you in that as well. We always end our services with what we call the priestly blessing. So even in your home right now on Resurrection Sunday, would you hold your hands in front of you? And then after this, we're going we're gonna to have one more song of worship this morning that you can enjoy with us. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God lift his countenance upon you and may he give you his peace. And may you live all the days of your life walking in the power of his love, the power of his authority, and the power of his resurrection in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. And remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. Happy resurrection, everyone. Let's worship the Lord together this morning. Come on, we're going to celebrate Jesus this morning. its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history there on a cross they made for sinners for every curse his blood atoned final breath and it was finished but 
not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens roared Come on, sing this And all hail King Jesus of light breaking through when all was lost he crossed eternity the king of life was on the move for in a dark cold tomb where our Lord was in miraculous breath and we're forever changed
bless you and have a fabulous Easter celebration today. We'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in today. We pray that that Easter message blessed you. We sure enjoyed it with our family. If this is your first time watching, we want to connect with you. So go ahead and fill out the blue card. All the information is already on the screen. And if you said yes to the Lord today, we want to hear from you. So please fill out the yes card information located in your screen and tell us what the Lord is doing in your life. Once again, we want to thank you. And from our families to yours, happy, happy Easter. Easter. Hi everybody, Pastor Scott and Michelle. We wanna take just a moment this morning to say thank you for your faithful support to us during the last three weeks as we have faced an incredible crisis in America. We also wanna take a moment because a lot of people have been asking us exactly how they can give to our church during this time when we're not meeting as a congregation. Yeah, so there are a couple of different ways, more than two ways that you can give. Uh, one is our text to give option and you can just look on the screen right there and the number for our text to give is on the screen for you. Uh, the other way you can give is on our website www.newhopeqc.org and at the very top of our home screen is an online giving button. Just click on that button, click on which campus you would like to give towards our Moline campus or our Milan campus and then follow the instructions. Well, we wanna make sure that we continue to worship together in both our tithe and our offerings. The church continues to have expenses that we have to meet, and not only can you give in those ways, but you can also mail in your tithe and your offering as you normally would, and some of you do that already, but we have also created the giving door. If you'll drive up into the East parking lot on 24th Street, look for the welcome banner, the green door, and there is a safe and secure drop box that you can use. So again, thank you so much for being a part of who we are, yes. for supporting us during this time yes. and standing with us in faith as we make it through this time together because we are gonna make it. God yes. bless you. God bless you.